you don't have the right to tell my 14 year old daughter she has to carry her rapist baby you yeah, understand to that? look that woman in the eye who's who was the but born listen, of a rape. Do you understand that that's a 14 year old child I if know. you a 14 year old child gets raped you say that they have to carry that baby joe rogan has become the latest person to hit out at jake paul for his comments on tyson's late daughter as you'll expect he was brutal and honest like the others as well as insulting when he needed to he gave jake paul the words of his life and we await Jake Paul's reactions to any of these ones. Let's hear him out. You motherfucker. I will knock your fucking teeth down your fucking throat, you motherfucker! No, you're not. Get the fuck out! No, I'm such a dark human being. Fight. Uh -huh. Jake Paul hasn't yet seen the end of his controversial slander on Iron Mike Tyson. He has received threats, insults, slanders, and trolls from the nooks and crannies of the world of boxing. Fans have had their say, and professionals have also made their deepest thoughts known. It's no news that Jake Paul has gained his popularity over the years through notorious, naughty acts and all other activities targeted at achieving wrong objectives. Despite transitioning to boxing, Jake Paul has transferred his social media irresponsibility to combat sports, and the only advantage is that he's been making headlines for it. However, disadvantages of his acts abound, earning him the ridiculous name the problem child. After his slander against Iron Mike Tyson with an insensitive allusion to his late daughter, Exodus Tyson, Jake Paul has attracted lots of hate and insults to himself. And the latest one to come after him is Ultimate Fighting Championship color commentator, podcaster, comedian, actor, and former television presenter, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan had earlier shared his take on the coming bout on July 20th, and while he did, he seemed so assured of Mike Tyson's speed and power and tipped him for a big victory over Jake Paul. He didn't speak light of Jake Paul, however. To him, Jake Paul was more than the ordinary YouTube star many perceive him as. He recalled some of Jake Paul's matches and claimed he had some good punches in him and was good enough. Regardless, Tyson was his pick. Reinforcing the decision is the fact that Joe Rogan has some good knowledge of Tyson's personality, giving him insights into his skill and fitness level ahead of the bout. Talking on his podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, Joe Rogan commented on Jake Paul's slander angrily. He spoke without mincing his words, lacking any iota of regrets and uncertainty in his speech. Typical of Joe Rogan and very controversial of him, his words were very strong and overboard at times. But he was totally unbothered. He said, this is the strongest reason why people keep doubting his ability to fight. The F-King idiot talks so much. He never uses any opportunity he has on air with sense. I know he started out his YouTube stuff early, but he's getting older and he should get some sense. Joe Rogan also proved a point to Jake Paul, explaining that even if Jake Paul had the very best of boxing skills, his talkativeness would make many reduce him to nothing. Even after knocking out two guys in the first round and having a 30-year advantage over Mike Tyson, he has very few people expressing their trust in his abilities as a result. Tip him for a win. All those who predict a loss for Tyson do that, not because of Jake Paul's skills. Joe Rogan's statement, though indirect, had some truths in it. Many who tipped Jake Paul for a win truly have little to say about his abilities. Rather, their choice was dictated by their Mike Tyson, who they feel is too old to fight against any young fighter, Jake Paul, or anyone at all. This shameless MF talks too much. He definitely was poorly raised. You could read it all over him and his brother. Sadly, Joe Rogan hasn't been the only one to talk about the upbringing of Jake Paul and his brother. Several others, including Mike Tyson, have had so much to say on that as well, especially with Jake Paul's dad getting into cases of pedophilia over the years. Many feel the Pauls, who grew up with their father after their mother remarried, lacked proper parental care, or specifically, motherly care. They didn't only lack the presence of a mother, they were also raised by an irresponsible father, and the evidence is what we see Logan Paul and Jake Paul exhibit today. Jake Paul's comments over Mike Tyson's late daughter, Exodus Tyson, must have been a slip. However, Jake Paul has tendered apology after alluding to a moment Mike Tyson is always unhesitant to refer to as the lowest and saddest moment of his life. Joe Rogan the continued, I know how much this means to Tyson. He's had confrontations with several fighters over the years, even after his retirement, but no one speaks about this. Tyson is so respected, but this F-King idiot just talks too much and I'm not surprised he's so foolish. 
Joe Rogan compared Jake Paul with many of the other boxers the baddest man on the planet has had altercations with and claimed none of them has been as talkative as Paul, seeing they all never mentioned anything about his late daughter. Truly, talking is a major part of boxing. It's what fans look up to before bouts. To an extent, it serves as an appetizer as many look forward to the match day. But boxers are smart enough to understand they have boundaries and won't spill some things. Mike Tyson's last face-off against Roy Jones Jr. wasn't this chaotic, as Jones exhibited so much honor and respect for the legend. Regardless, the match was a huge success with over 1.6 million pay-per-view sales made. The build-up to the match should have been a lesson to the problem child that one necessarily doesn't need a heated face-off to have a successful bout. Mike Tyson stepped onto the spotlighted stage and weighed in at 220 pounds, ripping off his shirt to reveal a muscled torso that could easily belong to an athlete of half his 54 years back then. The former heavyweight champion moved into a COVID protective glass box and went nose to nose with Roy Jones Jr., who was once the most talented fighter in the world. Jones's 210 pound frame was slightly less toned, but still clearly in better condition than most of his fellow 51 year olds. These two boxing greats are older and calmer men now, but they're returning to the ring Saturday night intending to recapture a moment of their brilliant past. Overwhelmingly, they've both worked very hard to make sure they won't be embarrassed in this extraordinary boxing exhibition. This is the fun part. Everything else to get here was hell, said Tyson, who was fighting for the first time in 15 years. Their fight at Staples Center was an eight-round sparring session of sorts. It had two-minute rounds, no official judging and limited violence. Although the limit depends on whether one was asking the California State Athletic Commission or the fighters, who both intend to let their hands go. Maybe I don't know how to go easy. I don't know. I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want the commission mad at me, Tyson said. But for Tyson and Jones, this unique pay-per-view show was less of a sporting event and more of a chance for two transcendent athletes to prove age was only just a number and aging is a choice. I don't look at life as age, I look at life as energy. You don't bring your age to the table, you bring your energy to the table. You don't go meet people, hey I'm Bob, I'm 59. You don't do that, Mike Tyson continued. During their face-off, Mike Tyson still seemed surprised by the wave of events that carried him back to the ring. He admitted the younger Tyson never would have believed he would be a middle-aged husband and father who needed to lose 100 pounds two years ago because that headstrong kid from Brooklyn had never thought that far ahead. I didn't even think I would live this long. I was just so intense and just took myself so serious, he said. Tyson got back into shape at the urging of his wife who got him to start doing 15 minutes a day on the treadmill. The 15 minutes turned into two hours and then expanded to biking, running, and eventually punching, along with the adoption of a vegan diet. Never eat anything. Just starve and exercise, he said with a huge laugh. The momentum started when he posted video of a training session on social media early in the coronavirus pandemic, and his crisp, powerful punches led to millions of impressions and a subsequent stream of increasingly lucrative comeback offers, along with the chance to raise money for charities. This is a part of my life that I had pretty much thrown away. My last fight, I didn't have any interest in doing it. I'm interested in doing it now, he said. Tyson was referring to his loss to journeyman Kevin McBride in 2005 when he finally wrapped up his singular career in ugly fashion. He became the heavyweight champion at 20 and reigned over the division for five years, but his epic downfall soured him on the sport. Mike Tyson also added, I want to do it now. Most of the time I was obligated to do it from a contract perspective. If you don't do this, we'll take everything you have and you'll be back in Brownsville. They were blackmailing me. It's a different perspective now. While Tyson became an international icon for his brutish, dangerous image and numerous misbehaviors, Jones was widely revered as perhaps the most skilled boxer of his generation. Jones was a preternaturally gifted athlete who dominated his weight classes while still pursuing his passion for basketball. Nate Robinson was a rookie guard for the Knicks in 2005 when Jones participated in a full practice with the team. I was freaking out, said the 36-year-old Robinson, no stranger to freakish athletic feats as a three-time winner of the NBA Slam Dunk Contest at 5'9". Robinson said, that was one of the highlights of my life, to be able to rub shoulders and hoop with one of your favorite boxers. Jones fought regularly throughout the 2010 S, but thought he was finally retired two years ago. When he got an offer to be the opponent in Tyson's comeback, 
Jones couldn't resist the chance to fight a legend he never got to meet during a career spent mostly at light heavyweight. So Jones embarked on his own comeback training regimen. It's been the craziest thing you ever could have imagined. I can't believe I'm able to maintain my speed at 51 years old. I'm still faster than 95% of the boxing world, and it shocks me. The aches and pains are there because you're 50, and they're going to be there no matter what you do. You just have to have a mental strength to overcome adversity, Jones added. Tyson and Jones were returning to a new world of boxing fandom and consumption, and the show was being promoted by Triller, a video-making app and social media platform, with a fight night show featuring performances by several rappers, a surprisingly solid undercard, and a co-main event pitting Robinson in his professional boxing debut against YouTube star Jake Paul. Robinson and Paul both seem appropriately awed by the circumstances of their bout. You've got to remember, I'm 23, and this is the first time that people my age will be able to experience a Mike Tyson fight live. I can't believe I'm a part of it, Paul said. Neither Tyson nor Jones is likely done with boxing after this show. Jones said he hoped to fight mixed martial arts legend Anderson Silva next if this one goes well, while Tyson will go wherever this strange trip takes him next. Me being here is already a success. Me just existing as a human being is a success, Mike Tyson said and closed. However harsh and strong they sound, Joe Rogan's comments wouldn't be taken too far by many who have known him to erroneously use some unacceptable words in his statements. He even had occasions where he had to tender public apologies for some of his commentaries. Once, Joe Rogan issued an apology on Instagram after a compilation of the podcaster frequently using the N-word on his podcast spread widely on social media. Rogan used the word more than 20 times in the clips from different podcast episodes, which he said were compiled over a span of 12 years. In his apology, Rogan said it's the most regretful and shameful thing he has ever had to address publicly. I know that to most people, there's no context where a white person is ever allowed to say that, never mind publicly on a podcast, and I agree with that. Now, I haven't said it in years, Rogan added. Rogan also addressed a video of him comparing a black neighborhood to a Planet of the Apes movie. I certainly would never want to offend someone for entertainment with something as stupid as racism, he said. And shameful thing that I've ever had to talk about publicly. There's a video that's out that's a compilation of me saying the N word. It's a video that's made of clips taken out of context of me of 12 years of conversations on my podcast, and it's all smushed together and it looks fucking horrible, even to me. Now, afterwards, Spotify, one of the biggest streaming services in the world, was under intense pressure because it was the exclusive distributor of Rogan's popular show. A Spotify representative declined to comment on whether it will take any action against Rogan, but a person familiar with the matter expressed that the company had been having conversations with Rogan's team about concerns with some of his past episodes. At some point, it appeared that Spotify had removed more than 70 episodes of Joe Rogan's podcast, according to the tracking site, dremising.com. In fact, Rogan decided to remove certain past episodes in concert with his apology. Sadly for Rogan, singer-songwriter India Airy was among a number of musical artists who then asked that their music be removed from Spotify after COVID-19 misinformation was aired on Rogan's show and posted the compilation of Rogan using the N-word on her Instagram account. The Grammy Award winner said that while she empathized with artists who asked for their content to be taken off due to COVID-19 misinformation, her protest was about his language and race. Rogan shouldn't even be uttering the word. Don't even say it under any context. Don't say it. That's where I stand. I have always stood there, she said. Ari used the hash delete Spotify hashtag to her almost 1 million followers on Instagram. They take this money that's built from streaming and they pay this guy $100 million, but they pay us like 0.003% of a penny. Just take me off. I don't want to generate money that pays that, Ari said on Instagram. According to a 2021 report, music industry estimates place Spotify's payout rate to musical artists at a half cent per stream, a rate that is often divided among record companies and artists. Neil Young was the first recording artist to ask that his music be removed from the platform on January 25th. He was joined by Joni Mitchell shortly after, and a growing list of musicians and personalities followed them to call out Spotify 
or to leave the channel entirely. Spotify exclusively hosted the popular podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, on which COVID-19 vaccine misinformation had been spread. Spotify responded to criticism, saying it was adding a content advisory to any podcast episode, not just Rogan's that included discussion about COVID-19, a move Rogan said he agreed with. It's become clear to me that we have an obligation to do more to provide balance and access to widely accepted information from the medical and scientific communities guiding us through this unprecedented time. CEO and co-founder Daniel Eek said in a statement back then. Rogan claimed that he previously used the N-word as part of a context, such as when he discussed a Richard Pryor album or the repeated use of the word in Quentin Tarantino's 1994 film Pulp Fiction. For a long time, when I would bring that word up, like if it would come up in conversation, instead of saying the N-word, I would just say the word. I thought as long as it was in context, people would understand what I was doing, Joe Rogan explained. He added, there's nothing I can do to take that back. I do hope that if anything, that this can be a teachable moment, because I never thought it would ever be taken out of context and put in a video like that. Rogan said in his apology, he's not racist. Whenever you're in a situation where you have to say, I'm not racist, you F up, and I clearly have F up, Rogan said. Never allowed to say that word, never mind publicly on a podcast. And I agree with that now. I haven't said it in years, but for a long time. Rogan addressed a video of him comparing a black neighborhood in Philadelphia to a Planet of the Apes movie in a deleted podcast, claiming he was trying to say they were in Africa because there's a lot of black people there. Planet of the Apes did not take place in Africa, which Rogan acknowledged. I certainly would never want to offend someone for entertainment with something as stupid as racism, Rogan said. Just before then, Rogan had brought up the subject of race in an episode of his podcast with guest Jordan Peterson, a Canadian psychologist and climate change skeptic. After a brief discussion of the spectrum of shades of people, Rogan said it was strange to call someone black or white based on their skin tone. Despite the allegations against Rogan, the fact remains that he is so loved by many. He not only based decent relationship with Mike Tyson, he's also got a good friendship with Dana White. Once Rogan got into that controversy, the UFC were prepared to part ways with Rogan over the controversy, however. White refused to let that happen under his watch, and the then president threatened to resign if they cut his longtime friend. White said, Anybody who is with me and has been with me knows when you're with me, you're with me. It's a two-way street. It's not a one-way street. I'm not one of these guys that is going to roll over. It's like going through VO bid. I wasn't laying off any of these people. Some of these people have been with me for 20 years. We're going to lay them off? Uh-uh. This MF will burn. Burn before I would do that to my people. It's just never... None of that type of stuff is ever going to happen while I'm here. I can't say what's going to happen when I leave, but when I'm here, the people who are with me and have been with me know exactly what's up, and Joe knows what's up. Rogan began working for the UFC in 1997, four years before White took over as president. It's a two-way street. Joe Rogan has been very loyal to me, and I am very loyal to Joe Rogan. After Zufa took over the UFC in 2001 and made White the face, Rogan attended some events and became friends with the newly appointed president who offered him a job as a commentator. It's a fact that he doesn't care about money and he did the first 13 shows free for us, White continued. That was at a time when we were hurting and he was like, wait a minute, do you want me to do the commentary? You're saying I get to sit in the best seat in the house and watch these fights for free? Yeah, I'm in. Then, obviously, when he turned things around, we made it up to Joe, but Joe is one of the things I loved early about the UFC. Rogan has worked with the UFC for more than two decades. He got his start with the promotion as a backstage interviewer at UFC 12, but he ended up quitting his role after two years as his salary could not cover the cost of traveling to the events, which were often held in out-of-the-way locations. Even when White and the Fertitta brothers were in control, it looked like the promotion would fail having struggled to get their fights on TV and sanctioned in some states. Then one fight in 2005 changed everything, and the company has not looked back since, and it was sold for $4 billion in 2016 and merged with the WWE in 2023, and White became CEO. Rogan has remained a regular on UFC PPV events ever since. Joe Rogan has come for Jake Paul. Let's see who's next. If you enjoyed watching this video, kindly react by clicking the like button. 
For the very best updates on news, moments, events, and actions in the world of boxing, ensure stay connected with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to turn on notifications to get alerted when we drop quality contents like this.